It's good to be with you all today. Today, I have a very important slideshow to show with you. And uh, I want to present it to you because so many teachers don't know what it's really like when they're beginning to teach. They don't know what they're really getting themselves into. They've heard a lot about it, how chaotic the classroom can get. Sometimes when the kids are left to do whatever they would like to do, they get rambunctious, they get rowdy, some start fighting and they just torment themselves and it's really a bad environment when there isn't proper moderation of the children present and that is part of the teacher's obligation to perform this moderation i want to share with you today my the rules and procedures that i would have to implement in a classroom how i would implement them the backup system if anything did fail with the implementation of it I want to share with you a uh, PowerPoint to start it off and explain to you how it worked uh, today. So I want to talk about procedures first and get those out of the way. So when it comes to procedures, they would begin when the child or the student walks in the door. Upon entry, they would be able to form, fill out the paperwork, work on the sheets that I give them, the uh, handouts or whatever it might be that particular day, whether it's coloring, whatever it could be. Uh, I would want them to begin working and I would implement this on the first day. I would, as soon as they walk in the door, I would greet them. I would begin working with them and uh, they would begin to work on their work at 9 a.m. before 9 a.m. before the bell ever rings and that would help them to get in this groove and practice dismiss would not happen when the bell sounds necessarily but it would be when i tell them that they're dismissed although that would indicate that i would be dismissing them sometime soon uh it's important for them to be there at when it starts and if i'm not there when it starts they're not going to feel that it's important that they're there when it starts which causes issues and problems and that is harmful to the students learning process it's a uh, important for them to know that attendance will be taken before the bell sounds and before 9 a.m so it's important for them to be a little bit early to start the day on a positive note so classroom procedures still continued here. Uh, I want to talk about how class discussion can happen when the teacher is moderating the questions and discussion because sometimes students can ask and talk about things that could be rather inappropriate. So that would be important for the teacher to be moderating the discussion. It's important for students to feel like their ideas are important and that's where part of this would be vital and integral to their learning process. And that is important as well. Uh, like I said, work would begin when they enter the classroom, when someone violates a rule. Uh, the procedure which would be followed to deal with the behavior would be first violation of warning. It would be very stern and firm so that they know not to violate it again. Second, it would be they would have to stay with me 30 minutes with another person in the classroom after class. I would just work on my classroom uh, work for the next day. Third, detention would happen. Fourth, detention and notification of parents. And then as a last resort, we would notify the principal, detain them or detention would happen and the notification of the parents would be on that too. So also when it comes to rules, there would be no rule rewards for if they obeyed or disobeyed the rules. Uh, the consequences would follow as, as natural events and natural rewards would probably follow too because they generally do in real life, but otherwise no rewards would happen because they don't really happen if they're not natural or logical rewards. But the natural and logical punishments would be what happened as well. So just to make that clear, no talking would be allowed without raising the hand uh, like this uh, so that the teacher can keep order in the class so that everybody's not talking at once and nobody's learning. Uh, it would not be allowed to ever, ever interrupt anyone. That is so rude. We would not allow that. Uh, 
uh, no wandering around in the classroom. People should sit down, stand up, whatever, but no walking around in the classroom. That causes distraction, the back and forth that children sometimes would do, or walking at circles. That would cause such distraction, and we don't want any more distraction than necessary because sometimes distractions are really inevitable, but we can, what we can control, we want to control. Do not treat anyone in a manner in which you would not want to be treated that is the best rule to follow because it is it encompasses all other rules and the fewer rules the better so that they can remember them and keep them down and this is one that really is beneficial and helping them remember what they are expected to do and follow a uh, classroom uh, floor plan the student's desk would be on the second half but they would be arranged to where they can sit together and work together and collaborate we want collaborative education where they can work together they would have a lectern where they can lecture not only the teacher but other students because the teacher can learn from these students as well the teacher is not the only one who knows everything in fact he don't know everything at all but it's important for him to be teachable and if he's teachable then it will teach the students to be teachable and all teaching needs to be done in a respectful manner, in a coaching manner. The, as you'll see in the top left corner, the teacher has an office in the classroom. I think this is very beneficial for grading or other procedures that would need to be done for carrying on classroom management. The student's library. This is an essential part. It would just be for reference when uh, in class or before class or after class when they go and get a book and they need to uh, look at it. Uh, the teacher lectern will be slightly after that, along with the teacher's desk. The teacher desk would be there for whenever the student is lecturing or whenever they're reading or preparing any presentation or working something out and doing homework or whatever. So that's what it looked like. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention it would be red because they need to be feel empowered. The students need to feel empowered to be able to overcome any obstacle, anything that might present itself in the way of their learning experiences. This is essential because there are so many obstacles that come in our way every day, no matter what we do. But when it comes to teaching, it teaches them to overcome those obstacles, the bridge between that and their goals and their dreams, what God has called them to do. It causes them to build that bridge. And that is very important because they'll have to build that bridge in life. Pure because we're going to be studying scripture in the classroom. We will begin each day with a, a devotional and prayer. This is very important. Uh, I have a backup system. If anything does not go as planned, the backup system would tend to send them to the principal's office. This would be the last resort, and it would usually end in expelling the student. They, this would be the final act of disciplinary action. They would not be able to attend the school ever again. Uh, the classroom management system and procedures for implementation of the system, it would require the teacher to be approachable. He needs to be a leader. He needs to be someone that they can approach their ideas with, that they can come to problem, come up to them with their problems and the questions. He needs to be uh, teachable of them because he needs to understand that he does not know everything. They would be more of coachable and mentors. They would be leaders. They would be people who allowed lecturing and propagating of other people's ideas in the classroom. They would come to grips with the things that philosophers have dealt with for ages. They would deal with things like creation. They would deal with things like purpose of man, grammar, English, stuff, just basics of math and science, but also they would deal with more philosophical subjects as well and historical theology of church and state probably. This would promote learning and challenge the minds of everyone, even the teacher at times, this kind of a system. And that's why it's important to have this kind of system. Well, today, uh, that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something from it. And I hope to learn something from you. Have a good day.